Hey booktube, my name is Kate and this is my channel chapter Kate. You might know that by now. So from the sound of it, there are children eating each other outside. Today I'm going to be doing a review of Isle of Swords, which I read for the Scallywagathon, I think it was last week. I'm lost track of time. I don't even know my own name. I have so many opinions about this book. There, See, there's so many opinions, but there, it was not, it was, I, so I'm just going to do this as I did my last book review. I'm going to kind of go by that same format. First things first, my first impressions. Well, I saw it. It looked like a basic pirate story. I was kind of excited about it. If you take this off, it's the exact same cover on the inside. kind of reminds me of those things where you see, like, Andrew Garfield go to some comic con or something as Spider-Man. He takes his mask off. He's like, hey! You know, that kind of thing. Why? Cover aside, I knew it was an inspirational fiction, and so that, I don't have any problem with inspirational fiction. I read, like, the Teenage Left Behind series. It was, like, 40 really small books when I was younger and stuff like that. So I don't have any problem with that. Um, however, with a lot of creative, inspirational products like inspirational music, inspirational books, there's not as much effort put into it cre creatively, and that kind of irks me a little bit, and... So reading the summary, I got that there was, you know, a captain father with a daughter who wants to be a pirate, but he wants to get out of piracy, and there's a young teenage guy who doesn't know who he is. And that was like a cool premise. It had a couple of different storylines you could follow. It sounded pretty cool. So I was kind of excited about it. I had, you know, not super high expectations for it, but decent expectations for it. Not to mention it had like a four point something rating on Goodreads and I had like 2,000 something reviews. So that wasn't horrible and I, I kind of thought it might be kind of good. Let's jump into the characters. Character number one. I'm not going to hold this the whole time. We're going to put that away. Character number one, Declan Ross. Captain Declan Ross. When I hear the name Declan, I kind of think of like the main guy in a romance novel. I don't know if uh, maybe that's just me. I don't know. Or I think of Jason Momoa in... Or the Frontier? I think his name was Declan there also. So Captain Declan Ross is supposed to be this pirate guy, but he's kind of dumb. Like, the things he says and does are just kind of dumb, and you think of captains as being just like a little bit more larger than life, and some people think, oh, it's charming if they're a little bit more human. And I'm like, yeah, but like, he's just kind of dumb. Like, he does some things that are kind of thoughtless, and he'll say something and make a mistake randomly, and you're like... That was dumb. He makes dumb decisions. He makes dumb choices. Not to mention, he's also a bad father. There was one scene where his daughter was on a ship and something happened to the ship. And the first thing he did was call out the name of the ship. And then, like, as an afterthought, he called out the name of his daughter. And I'm like, why? Why? Like, that? why? So I just didn't really like him. I didn't like him very much. He was dumb. He was a bad pirate. He was a bad father. And he was a poorly developed character. Second, we have a character called Cat. They kind of name him Cat. He's the he's like a 16 year old, 17 year old dude who you know washes up on the shore. He has amnesia. Amnesia is not written well, portrayed well, or respectfully in this book. He kind of when he gets close to something that rem that like reminds something or triggers or memory, he starts hearing like voices of his memories, and then he'll like go chasing off after it, and it's like. Apparently amnesia also gives you psychosis and impulse problems. It, it just seems really dumb. It annoyed me. It really annoyed me. Just, why? Then we have Anne. <sighs> Anne, Anne. First of all, you named her Anne, which is already a really popular famous pirate's name. Anne Bonnie, who I'm bitter about because I can't find a decent book on her. But, anyway. First, you have her named Anne. Second... She is supposed, she wants to be a pirate so bad, but everything she does is just so whiny. Like, I don't believe, as a therapist, I can't say, hey, um, crying is weakness. No, it's not. Crying is not weakness. However, do you see this? All the pink flags in this are when she starts crying. Let me read them for you. Tears started pouring down her cheeks. Anne fell to her knees and sobbed so hard she choked. Tears welled up and spilled down her face. She fell to her knees and wept. Anne began to tremble. Blah, 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 blah. She rushed to the rail and began to sob. Tears spilled down Anne's cheeks. I can do this, father, she said, tears already streaming. 
Anne laughed through her tears. Anne's head fell against the bars and she wept. Tears streaked her face. Okay, that one is okay because it's kind of a bad situation. That one makes sense. The rest, no. Oh, but I'm not done. Anne wept and he turned quickly away from her anguished sobs and tears spilled down her cheeks. 13 times she starts crying in this book. She's the only female character in this book, but let's portray her as crying 13 times. Now, she's not the only one that cries in this book. This monk cries two or three times, Cat cries like twice, and her father cries once. But if you look at the ratio, why did she have to cry 13 times? And why do we have to be so repetitive in the language you use to describe her sobbing? Her falling into something, her falling to her knees and crying, her doing this and crying. She wants to be a pirate and has been raised in a tough situation for most of her life, so you'd think she'd be just a little bit more resilient in situations. And again, I'm not saying that crying is weakness, but crying 13 times in a book is unnecessary. Like, why? And then there's the Captain Bartholomew, Bartholomew, Captain Bartholomew Thorne. He is the main antagonist of this book and he's very gruesome like everything that happens with him is super super gruesome and he doesn't seem like he seems developed because he's not just the same as everyone else but when you really look at it he's not really well de developed you don't really get that big of an idea of why he's the way he is you just know that he's bad he's gruesome that's all we know. The plot to this book is okay. It's actually, it moves along pretty well. I was actually able to finish and read it. Um, you know, as I said, there's, you know, a dude stranded on the island. He finds out who he is. Everyone's kind of connected. They get to a place. They find, like, there's treasure. There's all kinds of fun stuff, you know. There's fighting. Yay. All kinds of cool things. It's just the writing itself is just not where it should be. And there's some stuff in it that just annoys the frick out of me. I just can't. The language is repetitive. As you saw when I was talking a little bit about the crying situation, there's a lot that just gets repeated. Sobbed, fell to their knees, tears streamed down their face. I can't. I can't. Now I'm going to talk about some unnecessary stuff that's just thrown in here that shouldn't be in here. One, of course, there's a random kissing scene that just... There's nothing that leads up to romance anywhere in the book. And then at the end, this person kisses this person. Why? There's no, there's nothing leading up to that. There's no romance. There's nothing. Can, like, a male and a female be friends in a book without it having to be, oh, let's just add a kiss in there just for fun. Why not? Then there's a scene in here where they're talking about a ship. It's a man of warship. However, the person who built the ship refers to it as a her. And they say, if you like her, you can buy her outright. And then our nice Captain Declan Ross here says, you said if I like her, but Ramiro, this ship is a him, not a her. Why? Why is it that when you have something described as the greatest and the most strong ship, that all of a sudden, oh, <laughs> oh no, no, this ship's not a her, it's a him. No, no, no. Can't mistake that big and old bad ship as a her. It was just completely unnecessary line. I'm not going to, like, hate on men or anything. I'm not going to say every single thing has to be, you know, women empowerment, even though it totally should be. But come on. Like, that was completely unnecessary. It was so unnecessary. Speaking of women in this, I've already talked about Anne being portrayed as this whiny, let's cry every five seconds person. And she's also gets everybody into trouble a couple of times. And she's impulsive and she's emotional and she's moody. And let me just say, there's three women in this book that are described in any physical way they're all redheads and they're all fair-skinned and that is the only description really given of them and it leads you to believe that they're maybe connected or maybe they're related or something like that and even at the very end a comment is made you two could be sisters and now there is a sequel so who knows maybe somebody is related but there's three different women in this thing described not related at all so why does every single one of them have to be described looking the same way you could have easily just left out the color of their hair. Why are they all redheaded? I don't understand. It doesn't make any sense. It, there's no diversity. The male characters in this book actually have some pretty good diversity. There's someone of Hispanic heritage, there's Portuguese, there is African American, there are white, there, of course, because there's always a lot of white in these books. So 
why are there just three white redheaded women? It doesn't make any sense. I, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. I gave it a two and a half stars personally. I gave it a three on Goodreads because I don't really feel like it's bad enough to be a two because I mean I read it and I finished it, but it's definitely like nothing above a three. It's barely a three. Yeah, I, don't read it. You can read it if you want to see how bad it is, but I wouldn't recommend it. And there's other problematic stuff in there that I'm not even going to go with because there's just so much I can't stand. So, <laughs> that's all I have to say about that. If you would like more of this junk, subscribe to me. And that's all I got to say today. Bye!